Uh, welcome. Uh, this movie will be an attempt to document how a relatively simple data set can pose interesting challenges in fitting um, small endoscopy. So, a few days ago, a colleague of mine brought me a <coughs> data set which is going to be included on GitHub, and you will find a link to it under this movie. And uh, these are 100 nanometer diameter spheres, um, silica spheres in suspension, um, sold by manufacturer supposedly nearly monodisper system. Um, they provided data from their instrument, and if you look on that, what they gave me is a what is called CSV file, which is command separated file. So I get Q and intensity. Obviously, we don't have any uncertainties here. And I just want to walk you through, because it's relatively uh, interesting to see what challenges this simple data set seems to uh, pose. So first thing is, let's start, Igor. And let me load in the IRENA package. So now we have Irina. First thing is we're going to have to get the data in Igor. So I'm going to do in data import, import ASCII size data, get a graphical interface. We will point the data to the desktop. We can find it. Okay, we can type in here that we have a CSV data. So we're looking on this. Double click or hit test and preview. Uh, we have a Q and an intensity, there's no uncertainty. You can actually do a plot and you will see it here. So you can see pretty straightforward, nearly monodisper system. We have a beautiful guinea here. The user saying it's about 100 nanometers diameter. Um, so it's slightly washed out, so it's not perfectly vessel functional solutions. There's some polydispersity in it. This should be a trivial fit. Um, so let's see, because uh, there's interesting issues with that. First issue is, again, the data reduction software this specific user is using has no, um, no uncertainties. IRENA does need uncertainties for intensities, or what's called sometimes errors. So we're just going to create errors and just make 5% errors. That's actually worked surprisingly well for fitting in IRENA, just assign a fractional error of few percent to each data point, and uh, under most circumstances, IRENA is going to be happy. Um, let's uh, truncate the end of long names. It's perfectly fine. And just do import. And what you see is imported monodispersed 100 nanometer spheres, and it created QR, uh, and, and then created a uncertainty. So now we can go and kill this all. So with that, we can go in and plot the data, for example. So we go to plotting, select QRS, pick the data, add the data, or looking on a data set we're expecting. Okay, so that looks fine. Uh, let's see where the challenges are. So I'm going to go and pick a modeling package because we're going to need to do uh, modeling with this. So we're going to need to do a size distribution. So I'm going to pick a QRS again here. I'm going to pick these spheres and simply say add data. No surprise here, we're looking on basically data. By the way, these data are on arbitrary scale. This is this has nothing to do with absolute intensity scale. These are just completely bonkers number, numbers. So there's no contrast in this or anything. So here we are. Um, let's see how well we can get close with just assuming what we assume based on the manufacturer sheet. I'm going to use this. I'm going to use the size distribution. I try usually use Gaussian distribution because it's somehow easier to understand. This works in radii, so we should be looking on 500 angstroms uh, diameter. Let's make it. 20 angstroms wide size distribution um, and just see calculate model. We don't see anything and the reason for that is because the intents are completely outside of your field of view. It's all the way up here. So we are missing the absolute intensity because this is not an absolute intensity. 
we have one, two, three, four, five, six decades difference. So you can actually make this one 1e e minus 4. And let's just do a recalculate, and you see that we're pretty close. Again, we can hit auto set axis and it will scale up. So now we can see there is a slight offset here, so we can play with this and just tweak it up. If you have this auto recalculate, it's actually relatively straightforward. Uh, it's a little bit too much. So somewhere around here would be the right one. We can change the intensity down a little bit. Okay, and now we can do a fit here. We can probably need to broaden up this thing here a little bit so we will show these guys a little bit more. Uh, typically, I would start with fitting just these two parameters. First, that just shifts everything a little bit, and then I would add the width. I don't usually I start usually with just a few important parameters and then add the less important parameters. And we do a fit. Okay. So now what you can see is that we're fighting with the system here. Clearly we are not having success because if we want to fit this part of the curve here at lower Q's, the first guinea, we are not fitting uh, the high Q here. There's a misfit at low Q here, which you can see the index actually below what the dilute limit model would be here. So obviously there's more to this data set than it originally looked at. So first thing is, we need to make sure that these oscillations here don't wash out. And that's this washing out at high Q is controlled by the width of the standard of the size distribution. So let's just go and make it narrower. Okay, so by now they're approximately right. Uh, now we're a little bit too small, so we can go a little bit larger. And we see that they are getting reasonable. You can see that there is, this one is matching, this one is nearly matching, this one is lower, and that's one even lower. Um, typically, I would assume that there is some flat background, which is not subtracted and not included in the model yet. So I'm going to go back to data controls. Uh, this is uh, 10 to minus 4, about 10 to minus 5. So if I add in here 1e e minus 5, uh, you can see it increases the number there. It seems a little bit too high, so make it 0 0.5. And now we are matching the end of the data here. Okay, so now let's talk about this behavior here at low Q. Now remember what these are. These are spheres in, uh, in suspension. In order to have spheres, in this case I believe it's silica, in order to have spheres in suspension, uh, they will have to have functionalized surface, otherwise they'll aggregate and clog out and you're going to have a bunch of white crap at the bottom of your cuvette. Uh, so if there is any surface charge or anything like that on a surface, they will effectively hate each other and so what is going to happen is they'll probably going to repulse each other so there's no aggregation. When that happens, even a relatively small volume of spheres, maybe one or a few percent, by the way, I was not told what the percentage is, and I could find out, but I didn't look for that. But anyway, even a relatively small volume fraction uh, can <clears throat> more or less order itself in such a way that they have this kind of long-range order. And when that happens, what you see is a structure factor. And structure factor, the telltale sign of a structure factor is the fact that the dilute limit data model is higher than the, uh, than the data at low Q. So this is a telltale sign of a structure factor. There is yet another, at least one more other way how to achieve a lower intensity at low Q, but that's highly unusual. In this case, this is basically telling you there's a structure factor in here. So it's not a dilute system, it's going to be some um, other type of system. There's a lots of structure factors available and it's not necessarily clear which one's going to be the right one. Um, I have found out that hard spheres kind of work, so I'm going to use hard spheres even though I'm not necessarily sure that 
um, that it's the correct structure factor. Um, so I have put in here 500 because it's a radius of the sphere and it's about 557 here, so at least 500 here. And I'll just throw in some volume fraction, maybe 0.05 or something. We can fit them. Uh, if you make changes in this control screen, you can try hitting twice and it should recalculate. And as you key, can see, it recalculated. So now we are fitting the data out here and all the way in. So we have improved the fit. And if you want to see how much, just I'll just make it a dilute system again. You can see that. I'm going to make it a hard spheres again, and you can see that. Okay. So with this, I can push the fit button again and see if I can fit those. And you can see that it fitted a lot better, this data here. It washed out again this part here, so I made a mistake, and I still let this parameter change. Now, what I'm doing is I'm trying to fit these last few humps in here uh, for the right height. And so that looks fine. I'm going to uncheck this now. And I can do a fit on this again, this time without the full weighted half max. And what you can see is, you can see that now we fit this area here. That's what the structure factor does for it. Basically, it distorts the shape of the curve here. So it's no more a dilute system, Guignet, but it's actually sharper. This step here is a sharper thing, and it's caused by the, um, by the uh, structure factor parameters. The other thing which we can see here is that we are misfitting this area here. And this is actually a relatively clear telltale sign of something else in the data. And took me some time and discussion with the uh, owners of the data. In this case, even though they have, as you can see, very, very nice, dense points on the detector, and the detector has relatively small pixels, the beam size, which is used to measure these data, is actually relatively large. Um, with you know, we worked out a bit on what the data of the width of the of the beam on the detector is, and with some hand waving, we figured out that actually the Q resolution, in other words, the width which is included in every one of these points, is at least. Uh, 0 0.001, if not slightly more than that. So, Irina can account for that. So you can go in data controls. So you can say I have either slit or Q resolution. So I can click on that. Now this is not slit smear data, but these are Q resolution data. So let's just take the, the typical one would be Gaussian fluid at half max, and I'm going to use a fixed DQ for every point. And more or less, you can ignore the other parameters on that thing. This will, this should work. Then I'm going to go back here and hit Calculate Model. And what you can see is that now the Q resolution has significantly higher effect or impact on data at low Q than at high Q. You know, and we can now have a discussion if that number is correct. If you make that number a little bit larger, which may or may not be true, we don't necessarily know. It's going to wash out this thing a little bit more. This is a part where you really need to figure it out from the instrumentation. This information should be provided by the instrument. Anyway, so now we have actually a Q resolution here, and we can probably fit all the parameters now quite well. And what you can see is that we actually got this fitting reasonably well argumentatively this is a little bit broader than it should be so we're still probably not perfect but close enough uh, so we can look at that and we can say okay so this is now what we would fit and I'm gonna put a tax in here and notice that this is actually became quite complicated case so what we needed is to use a size distribution uh, the size in this case the Gaussian is mean mode and median are the same uh, radius is 555, uh, which basically means that the 100 nanometers is not true. They mean 
diameter is 110 nanometers, but that's okay. That's probably within the precision which the manufacturer can make. You get the full width at half max. So if you want, you can actually, you know, get a graph of a size distribution here, and it shows you what it is. Uh, then what we found out is, yes, we're using spheroidal aspect ratio 1. We used a structure factor hard spheres. Now notice this radius here is slightly less than that. They should be probably at least that, if not more. I'm a little surprised by that. It tells you the volume fraction is 0.049, which is suggesting that this is a 5, 5 percent, 5 volume percent uh, concentration of these silica spheres, which does not surprise me, then in that case it really needs a structure factor because the shape at 5 volume percent is actually pretty distorted. And you can see that without accounting for the uh, smearing effects of the Q resolution effectively on how wide is the, in, you know, what is the integration width of these, each one of these points, uh, we wouldn't be able to fit these data. So you have to account for structure factor, size distribution, and a instrument resolution in order to fit these data well. And I thought that this is something which is interesting because it's a relatively simple data set, but it seems uh, at the end that it requires quite complex model. And uh, it actually, in order to fit it really well, uh, it requires information which turns out is not available from the instrument scientist in this case because they were not aware about its importance and never actually calculated that. By the way, if you use Nika for data reduction, you will get both uh, uncertainty for intensity, in other words, you will get the error, and Nika will attempt to calculate for you the Q resolution because if you give Nika uh, the pixel size, which it needs anyway, and you give it a beam size, it actually convolutes all of those things together and provide you with a Q resolution, which then can get accounted. If these data came from Q resolution, we could go in and we could uh, select here that the source of the smearing is a uh, is a wave which would be available here. So we would have a wave. There would be a basically a number for each point which need, which Irina would be able to use. Anyway, so that's the result. I will now. Uh, post this on YouTube. I will also make this data set available on GitHub so anyone wants, who wants to you know play with this and fit this with their own Arena package can do it at home and follow this movie and see what needs to be done. Okay. Well thank you very much and next time.